What's up there people, I'm Chef Michael Reyes and you're watching The Hungry Winos. What do you think about when the days get shorter and the nights get colder? That's right, creamy buttery mashed potatoes. This is rated G show people. So step on up and let's get started. So a little bit of housekeeping. I wanna start off with the potatoes. You could totally do this ahead of time. If you wanted to, instead of cutting them up, you can leave them whole, keep them in water overnight in case you're having a dinner party. If not, and you're ready to cook right away, not that big of a deal. All we have to do is strain these things off. So we can go ahead and take out the existing water. All right, the next thing, as far as hot and cold water, I get a lot of questions about, do I start off with hot water or cold water when it comes to vegetables? Here's the trick. If it's grown below ground, you start off with cold water. If it's grown above ground, hot water. So for instance, tubers like this, this is below ground. The whole reason is when you start off with cold water, the temperature comes up evenly and it cooks evenly. If you were to start off with boiling water and add the potatoes, the outsides would be cooked, the internal potato would not be, and it'd just be a horrible product. So once again, below ground, cold water, above ground, hot water. And as far as cranking up the heat, once again, you can go ahead and put it on high once you start. The potatoes have no idea what's happening right now. So high heat and get them boiled. Once it gets to a boil, you can reduce the heat. So after 20 minutes, we gotta check our potatoes. Very easy to do, just check for uh, doneness with a fork. If they go through, we're cool. And looks like it. So let me just move this stuff out of the way and we can strain these off. All right, here's the key step. We wanna put these uh, potatoes back in the pot. What we're looking to do is get all the moisture out of these potatoes because what I wanna trade is the water for butter and cream. So as I'm smashing these, I'm looking for the water to evaporate. Now, if we were in France and I was French and I had an accent, I would go ahead and tell you to turn off the uh, flame and let these things sit to dry out for 15, 20 minutes. But when you're making something like this, do you really want to wait 10 or 15, 20 minutes? Not really. So leave on the heat. We're just looking for, if you could see it, as these start to dry out, they're going to go ahead and change color on the top. So we're looking for dryness around the edges. We can go ahead and see the two-tone color. White, starting to dry out, and then the darker potato looking. Once these are dried out and smashed, we could begin to add our butter. So what I'd like to do, we have about two pounds of potatoes in here, and I have about a half a pound of butter. Now that sounds like a lot, but I would actually love to add like another pound of butter. But we're trying to be low fat, as you can tell by my size. So we'll go ahead and add the butter. Now, what you're probably thinking is, why don't you melt the butter first? And that's cool, you can ask that question. Uh, what we're looking to do is keep these potatoes not so much stiff, but with texture. If I were to go ahead and melt the uh, butter, it would just be like really soupy and you're trying to make it thick again. So just like when we make a butter sauce, you have cold butter incorporated slowly, it's the same situation here. We want to keep the thickness of the potato and incorporate butter and not lose texture. I'm going to add a little bit more butter. And as you can see, we still have nice consistency to our potatoes. And I've added a lot of butter. So now our butter is nicely incorporated to our potatoes. Let's say you added too much butter. Go ahead and get a whisk and start whisking your potatoes. If you have a little bit of heat and a little bit of whisking action, that'll go ahead and incorporate a little bit better for you. So as you can see, we're still relatively stiff. Not that big of a deal. Now, at this point, we wanna add just a little bit of cream because I want the textures to be a little bit smoother. Uh, you can warm the cream. I went ahead and microwaved this. So when I add the cream, I'm not looking for a lot. I'm just looking for mouthfeel. And these look really 
lush. In fact, I want to taste them. Horrible. You can't have any. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Again, if we were in France, this whole black pepper thing would not fly. They'd want the white pepper. But the black pepper to me has more flavor, a little bit more bite to it. And I'm totally fine with having a little bit of flakes in my mashed potatoes. So it looks like we're almost done with these. I want to give it one more taste. Those are damn good. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to a little bit more butter. We'll finish these bad boys off. And I think we're good to go. One more teaching technique though. Let's say we wanted to make these mashed potatoes and you want to sit them for a period of time. You can go ahead and put them in a vessel, kind of like this. And obviously if you were cooking for a bunch of people, it'd be bigger. But if you were to put these in here, you put them in and put a little cream on top and put some saran wrap on top. Make sure it's tight and it'll stay warm. And as the potatoes dry out, that cream goes back in, into it. So if you want to do this ahead of time, you could totally do that. I think these potatoes are done. We're gonna go ahead and serve these up. Try and get them all in. And there you have it. A little bit of mashed potatoes with just a little bit of butter. And if we can garnish these out, a little bit of chive, a little bit of a flag. And there you have some creamy, buttery mashed potatoes. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Hungry Winos. If you found it helpful, make sure to hit that like button. It helps the channel grow and is always appreciated. We have a lot of recipes on the way that you're not gonna wanna miss. So if you haven't, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on what's new. Also, if you have any culinary questions, feel free to reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. I'm Chef Michael Reyes, see you next time.